Uh, we won't have to eavesdrop today. Kevin O'Connell will be introduced to the press conference as the new Vikings head coach, only the 10th coach in team history. Mike Zimmer was there for eight years. Before that, it was Leslie Frazier. Before that, it was Brad Childress. Before that, it was Mike Tice. Before that, it was Dennis Greenpoint. I remember them all, and none of them won a Super Bowl. Will Kevin O'Connell win a Super Bowl in Minnesota? We'll see what he says today. You know, this is the day that they say all the right stuff. This is the day that they get the fans all fired up so they renew their season tickets and they buy their jerseys and they buy the new hats and they buy this and they buy that. It is a business. Uh, Brad Childress actually won more games than he lost. That's depressing. Um, God. Who was your favorite, uh, but, uh, uh, Mike, favorite out of all those coaches? You know, even let's add Denny Green Out of in those there. four? And, you know, well, uh, Jerry Denny Burns Green, back Denny Green. in the day. Denny Green was your favorite? Yeah, yeah, because the, the the Vikings had gone through, uh, you know, a three-year stretch of mediocrity, and Denny Green changed everything right away. And they were in the playoffs, 92, 93, 94. They missed it in 95. Then it was 96, 97, 98 was the magical year that they should have gone to the Super Bowl. 99, the Rams' emergence got in their way. 2000, they were back in the in the NFC Championship, and the, the, the Giants intercepted their their uh, their signals from the booth down to the sideline. One of the most underreported stories in NFL history. The Giants cheated that day. I'm kidding. Don't sue me, Giants. I'm joking. But there was a little story about that, but it disappeared as quickly as it ever came up, the 41 nothing game. But Denny Green, cause, because I, when I first discovered the Vikings, they had Bud Grant. Right. And they were always good. So you yeah. kind of took Bud Grant for granted. Right. And after Bud Grant, it was Les Steckel, which was a disaster. Uh, yeah. Jerry Burns was just kind of funny. Like they were successful despite they Burns. They were good. And his yeah, foul but it was. He was like a character. Right. Hair messy. We always called him. <laughs> we always called him Bedhead Burns. Yeah. That, my, my buddy and I, Bedhead Burns. Yeah. He looked like he looked. He always looked like he rolled out of bed. Gee, we I, always looked like, like Peter King on a Yahoo uh, <laughs> when you're doing, working with him for a Yahoo video on Tuesdays. <laughs> Straight out of bed, gets up. Don't even. I think he does him in bed. I think he just like sits up like the Undertaker, and his desk is there, and he does the videos, and then lays back down. I really do. So, but uh, Denny Green, I really thought they were going to win a Super Bowl with Denny Green. Well, yeah, well they should have. I mean, you, you know, we we've talked about it enough. They blew it definitely. All right, so like you know, Mr. Viking fan, Mr. Purple People Eater over there, how you feeling about the new head coach, Kevin O'Connell? You know, what, I know we know you wanted Jim Harbaugh. We know that. Thank God you didn't get him. I think it's a blessing in disguise. How are we feeling about Kevin O'Connell? I, I, I wanted Jim Harbaugh. That's how I'm feeling about Kevin O'Connell. Gosh, jeez, jeez. Here, here, here's here's the, here's the thing. I've been doing this for so long now that guys who were drafted years into the existence of PFT are now becoming head coaches. That's how long I've been doing it. Yeah. So it's hard for me to get on board with someone dramatically younger than me who is coaching the team that was coached by Bud Grant. Well, even who was though you just saw God descended from right. heaven when I was eight years old, it's even, hard for me to process. Well, this. Even though you just watched the Super Bowl with two coaches that are significantly younger than you and, you know, got their teams there from that coaching none tree. Them, none of them. That doesn't change. None you? of them coached the Vikings. None <laughs> of them coached the Vikings. All right. It's, well, you should be excited. They, they, and, well, I'm not. I'm sorry. I mean, you want you want an honest answer? You want me to lie to you? You can turn another channel and they'll lie to you all morning long and tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not excited about it. I'm not. I'm not excited about Ed Donatel as the defensive coordinator. What the F is that? I mean, there, there's so many of these coaches, and, and, and I know that it's a tough job, but there's so many of these just kind of like guys who have been hanging around that really aren't great. I, I mean, shouldn't you want great coaches? You want to fix your defense? You don't fix it with Ed Donatel, all due respect. I, when I saw that last week, I was like, what is this? Is he going to use a 3-4 now? Great. Ask Mike Nolan how that went in Dallas. Well, uh, listen, I, I, I hear you. You know, I do think Ed Donatel, you know, has been around some pretty good defensive minds the last few years to where uh, I understand maybe some of the other stops weren't, you know, great or sexy but I think he's grown his knowledge I can get behind that and support that I can you know whether that's you know in Denver with Vic Fangio and company right he was with the Bears and and that you know Fangio there and that group and then you know even Brandon Staley was a part of that group so I gotta think he's gotten better on that side of the ball yes you know again it does come down to relationships and knowing people to a degree 
You know, I think there is some connections between Ed, Ed Donatel and that coaching staff. So that's there. Yeah, you want to have a guy that you know you feel comfortable. I think it's a young head coach in Kevin O'Connell. He'd like to have a guy that's been there and done that a little bit on the defensive side of the ball so he doesn't, you know, have too much on his plate that way. I, I don't I don't look at it and think, oh, man, that's a dumb hire. I don't. I understand you not being excited. But, but I can get behind Ed Donatel, and I can certainly get behind Kevin O'Connell. Again, we're going to see what he's made of. It's hard to know right now, like we've talked about a little bit last week at the Super Bowl. He's never really even called plays in the NFL, you know? So that's, that's something we got to see. He's still a beginner in that aspect, but he's been behind people who are really good at calling plays in the NFL too, and he's been able to learn, you know, let alone – see how a culture's built and all the other things that go along with it. And I think O'Connell has that type of personality to where he can get a good culture together there in Minnesota like McVay as well. You know, again, it just he rubbed me he rubbed me the right way being around him a few times to where Mike, you know, again, not that I'm always right, but I at least went walked away and went, that guy's got, you know, head coach in him. The way he can command a room, talk to people, do that. And those are one of the, you know, the first few things I look at for potential head coaches. I just know when Sean McVay got the job with the Rams, there was a buzz. And maybe it's because yeah. he was so damn young. There was a buzz and an expectation from the moment he walked through the door. Right. That this guy was going to be great. Right. And there's no, I'm sorry, the buzz isn't there. Maybe it's because they flirted with Jim Harbaugh as aggressively as they did, that the buzz went his way, that that was the guy with the name. And I just feel like Kevin O'Connell is the latest iteration of the offensive coordinator of Super Bowl champion. There's always going to be one that's the hot guy. And how many of those guys Unless end you're up being, right. <laughs> being eight and nine, right, exactly, end up being eight and nine and ultimately getting fired after five, four or five years. I, I just, I, it's, it's a predictable, safe, formulaic selection it's not fortune favors the brave it's not just a, a tagline to sell a, a pyramid scam it's it's real when it comes it's, it gets back to what we were talking about last segment are, are you going to do something bold in an effort to go win a super bowl or are you just looking to tread water be 10 and 7 9 and 8 11 and 6 i just feel like i feel like for as much as the Vikings created the impression when they fired everybody, at least Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer, that that just good enough was no longer good enough. I feel like they've settled back into their valley of just good enough. I, I And we'll see. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Kevin O'Connell, well, I'm sorry. I know this is a bad first impression, but prove me wrong. I'm, well, I, I, I'm, not, know, gonna, I'm not going to lie yeah. about my honest opinion. That's my honest opinion. I, I, I hear you. That, that's fine. And I understand the questions. And, hey, it's uh, the questions are real, too. You know, again, like we talked about last week, too, the optics look weird. A guy that got a head coach that hasn't called plays. And to your point, Byron Lefwich and Eric Bieniemy don't get a job. Doesn't look right, certainly. But doesn't mean he's not qualified for it. And, hey, I can also understand owners want to go with this route. I mean, again, we're sitting here in a, in a league right now where, you know, the, the, the final four in the NFL had three guys from this coaching tree. So that's, it's hard to not see that. Zach Taylor, Matt LaFleur, I mean, no, not even Matt LaFleur. So, I mean, you had, you, had, you had four in the final eight, but you had, you know, you had McVay, Shanahan, Zach Taylor, and then, of course, you had LaFleur, who led the number one seed in the NFC. They all know each other, and Kevin O'Connell's from that. So I'm, I'm not going to fall, you know, from falling into that trap right there with Kevin O'Connell. I can understand that. I can, I can get behind that, that, that aspect of it, and I think that's what they're looking at. They're hoping they get, you know, a magical guy just like those guys are, where they can turn their team around in a hurry and make them a contender. So um, I, I do get the, the thought process there from the Wolf family. Okay. My, my point, though, when they didn't hire Harbaugh was there's always going to be that guy. If it doesn't work out with Harbaugh, you're going to have that guy. There's always going to be the next guy in the McVay tree, the Shanahan tree. That guy's going to be there. And you can do that then after you, after you roll the dice with the guy who took a six and 10 49ers team with the benefit of no offseason program to the brink of the Super Bowl in his first year on the job. 
I, I th that, and I know, and I know that was ten years ago, and the game has changed, and his offense sucks. I know all that. It sucks. But, uh, I mean, that team was a Super Bowl yeah. team, and he couldn't win a Super Bowl. That's the first thing I want to say. I would say they are clearly the most talented team in football for like four years. Clearly, you can talk to anybody in the sport. That's where I just I won't get behind John Har Jim Harbaugh the way you will. I definitely won't. I know I got personal issues with him, but I even thought before the personal issues he was overrated as a coach. His offense is stuck at stunk at Stanford. They stink at Michigan. He, he gives them, like, very little wiggle room to win football games. I mean, look at the Georgia game this year. That was the game plan you guys came in with? Run up the middle. Uh, fullback, hit that guy and run up the middle against a team that's got, like, 20 pros on the front seven. Like, it's just stupid. He's overrated. I'm sorry. It's a gift, it, it's a gift that they didn't sign him. You're going to be happy. You're going to be happy, and you would have been more mad if Kevin O'Connell went somewhere else and became this guy that, you know, you're hoping he becomes. And if they went Harbaugh, you'd have been sitting here going, well, they could have got Kevin O'Connell, but they went with Harbaugh. You'd be saying that three years from now when Harbaugh would go, I think I'm going to leave here and get the hell out of here because I've pissed off everybody in the organization and everybody hates me now, and I can't work with anybody, so I'm going to go back to Michigan and do that. But so, I, you know, you know me, I can't get behind Jim Harbaugh with anything. So where, where would Kevin O'Connell have become the head coach this year? Oh, well, no, but Minnesota? maybe next year. You miss him out next year. I'm just saying next year maybe. that It's just, you, you know, so they're going with the guy right now that they think is hot instead of the guy that's, you know, been a pain in the ass but that everybody he's worked for and had good results, good results. He didn't, he didn't build the team in the 49ers. The team was built. You know, they had a crappy coach before that. He came into a right situation. He got them on the right track, no doubt about that. But he wasn't signing the free agents or doing anything like that. You know, that's where I still get mad at, like, the Trent Balky talk. That team was phenomenal. And, yeah, he, every, if there's a big game, Jim's going to lose it. We've proved, that's been proven. How can you get not be behind that? I mean, he's, it's year six. He finally beat Ohio State. He weaseled out of playing them last year. Didn't even want to play them. That's what you want? The guy that's, like, afraid to compete? I don't even want to play them so it doesn't go on my record. I mean, get out of here. I can't stand him. <clears throat> and then he weaseled more money out of Michigan. <laughs> Look at him. He's such a weasel. I can't stand him. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad, yeah. I'm glad that I have created – an environment where go you are Ohio State. Content o -H -I -O. to be honest. O -H -I -O. Yes. All yeah. we want <laughs> is honesty. We don't want lies. We don't want fakery. We don't want buffoonery. We want honesty. But uh, I still, I I'm sorry. I know I, you do. I, still, I know. I wanted it. I wanted it, and I thought it was going to be great. Yeah. And now we'll see what happens. And you know, when you mention Shanahan and McVeigh, yeah, and Lafleur and Taylor, yeah. With Shannon and McVay, there was real buzz and expectation they were sure, going to be great, and sure. they have been. And they were calling plays, LaFleur, too. Right. With right. LaFleur and Taylor, it was. I remember with LaFleur, we were kind of like, mm, yeah, definitely. he's getting thrown to the wolves here with right. Aaron Rodgers, and Rodgers didn't get input in this. Oh, good luck, Matt LaFleur. Good luck with all that. LaFleur's been tremendous. Taylor, it helps to have Joe Burrow and, and Jamar Chase, but Taylor has turned it around in a bad situation where they – they have a lot of outdated procedures, to say the least, in Cincinnati. So uh, we'll see. If O'Connell's successful, it's going to be more like LaFleur and Taylor because he's not walking through the door with buzz. He's not a guy who picked Minnesota over J Jacksonville or Houston. Yeah, I hear you Houston there. You're or, right. The hype's you know, not other behind it. They, they, there was no tug of war for I get Kevin O'Connell that made him an A-lister. Yes. So I hear you there. Either, You're right. The Vikings got it got it really really right and the rest of us are are missing something or uh you know they'll they'll be back in the market for another head coach maybe they can hire jim harbaugh three or four years from now. <laughs> he'll be available i'm sure <laughs> speaking of harbaugh he did sign a new contract oh yeah extension through 2026 but the buyout's the key i haven't seen the updated buyout terms i, I think next year he'll be thinking about going to the nfl again the, the things he said about the Super Bowl yes. versus the college national championship, right. it's obvious to me he wants to go back to the NFL. No doubt. I mean, how did he phrase it, Mike? Like, what well, one's the ultimate prize and the other one's just a, it's a nice prize. I'll settle for it. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, as well go it get all. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it says it all. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Either way, go Ohio State. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.